Okay, um, we're a little bit past, but thank you for, apologize for the delay. Thanks for being on the call. Um, so um, first of all, we're gonna have the uh, public hearing on the tentative budget for the town fund, general assistance and sewer for fiscal year 2020-2021. I'm gonna go ahead and call the public hearing to order and ask the clerk to call the roll. Uh, Trustee Saturn. Present. Trustee Naradowski. Present. Trustee Ingrafia. Present. Uh, Trustee Keenly. Present. And Supervisor Sweeney. Present. Okay, um, this is a hearing um, for any uh, public comments uh, or board comments about um, the uh, the tentative budget or the, the final budget for the town fund general assistance and sewer budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Are there any public comments? Seeing none, any board comments? Hearing none, can I have a motion uh, to, go ahead. I was gonna say, um, should we talk about the 5,000 for the assessor now or in the regular meeting? I, I would discuss it because we can vote at the, the regular scheduled meeting, so I would just suggest we do it then. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay, hearing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So by so Trustee moved. Keenly. Seconded. Seconded by Trustee Nordowski. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing is adjourned. Going to go ahead and call the regular board meeting uh, for March 30th to order and ask everyone to please rise for those that are here uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, and God, and indivisible liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, I, will, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Trustee Saturn. Present. Trustee Nierodowski. Present. Trustee Ingrafia. Present. Trustee Keenly. Present. Supervisor Sweeney. Present. Okay. Uh, any public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Are there any items the board, uh, any board member would like removed from the consent agenda? Are there any items the board would like to comment on uh, from the consent agenda? On the HR green, should, do we just leave that as is or? Um, you, can, you can author, I mean, it was noted that we're gonna hold on to that um, uh, for the time being as we finalize any issue, outstanding issues with uh, the renovation project. We can authorize it for payment um, or we can pull that off. I mean, since it's listed as a hold, we can probably pull that off. Are, we, are, are there two checks or one? Okay. I think there was two to eight. One, this one, yeah. Okay. So go ahead, Trustee Saturn, go ahead. Uh, were, there was two checks for HR Green. Was only the second one being held? No, they're both being held. Okay, thank you. The board like to remove that check? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, do is there I consensus? Is there consensus to remove that that check? Are there any are there any objections? Just one. This one this 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 month. Are there any objections to pulling that check off the warrant for approval? No. Okay. Okay. Hearing none, we we will remove that check from the con the warrant. Uh, and well, it'll be on the warrant, but we'll remove it from the consent agenda. Okay. Uh, with that item removed, are there any other items the board would like to discuss? All right. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda with that change? So moved. Moved by Trustee Saturn. Is there a second? Second. Who was that? Bob, Bob Ingrafia. Trustee Ingrafia. Okay, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Saturn. Aye. 
Trustee Nierodowski. Present. I need a need an affirmative or a, a negative vote. Okay. Did you say? Aye. Did you say? Are you, I'm, I apologize. Are you voting present on on that vote? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I I misunderstood. Go ahead. He's marked as present. Trustee Ingrafi is marked as present. No. Okay. All right. So. Oh, they are. They are. So Trustee Saturn was an I. What is Trustee? Present. What is Trustee Nierdowski? He's voting present. He's present. voting present. What about Trustee Ingrafia? Aye. Trustee Keenly. Aye. And Supervisor Sweeney. Aye. Hey, okay, motion carries. Consent agenda is approved. All right. Uh, discussion and potential action on approval of minutes. You have minutes from the, the February 24th, 2020, regular board meeting and the March 4th special board meeting. Um, uh, agenda. What's the um, clerk Bussey had pointed out that on the uh, regular meeting minutes, both of um, I'm sorry, on both sets of mi minutes, the word agenda appears um, under the heading of both sets. Uh, he recommends that be removed if there's no objection. The minutes. It'll be instead of agenda, it'll be titled minutes. Okay. Okay. Any. Other questions or comments about those minutes? No. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve those sets, both sets of minutes, with the change uh, that trust that Clerk Bussy highlighted? So moved. Moved by Trustee Saturn. Is there a second? Second. Is that Bob? Yes. Okay, yes, Trustee yes. Ingrafia. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right, presentations, there are none. Uh, reports um, from the elected. Was there a comment? No. Okay. Um, reports from the elected officials. First up, the assessor, Connie. Uh, you have my written report, which outlined the procedures that I took once the emergency uh, occurred and was imminent. Um, things have worked out um, as well as we could expect. And um, I also believe that going forward, that the new protocol with a rotation uh, of staff by phone uh, is, is a correct way to go. Uh, we're currently working on getting our office organized and let me take this opportunity at this point to say that although our square footage is smaller, you know, sometimes that's nothing but a good thing. Uh, we purged and purged and purged, and as of today, we continue to purge. Um, and it allows us to streamline, and uh, we're excited about our new facility. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. Any questions for Connie? No. Okay. Thank you, Connie. Uh, clerk's report, George. Um, the clerk's report, you have a copy of it uh, to discuss the current, vo the recent FOIAs. Also, it mentions the public notice we put out. And then just remind all of you um, that the um, elected officials, um, a statement of economic interest needs to be submitted by May 1st, um, or there's a, um, there's a, a late fee will be, um, will be um, um, accrued and um, each elected official have to carry that on his own. So I would just get in, on, you can do it online and get that completed before May 1st. All right, any questions for George? Okay. Has anybody received notice uh, on those uh, as of yet? I, I've received an, yeah, e I have an, I've received an email notice, yes. I did I've mine. already submitted mine. You did receive an email on it? All right, I'll have to check my emails. Uh, yeah, there was an email on it that gave you an access code. Right, I understand. I just haven't seen it. Okay, no, I've already filed mine. It's a very simple form. Okay. Was that, I'm trying to remember if the email came to my home email or my um, 
township email. It's, it's it's whatever. I think you have to include whatever email you want to get communication from when you do the filing. It's the same one it went to last year. So, so whatever so. you used last year is what they'll have sent it to. Yeah, mine came to my home. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, any other comments there? Okay, Highway Commissioner's report, uh, Art. I uh, just want to say that uh, we're transitioning over from winter season to summer season, and we did have a pretty good uh, deluge of rain here on Saturday. Uh, the, the new system kind of moved a lot of water out of our areas. The only thing was uh, the winter buildup. Trustee Nordowski and myself were out cleaning up the uh, the uh, grades and everything else so the water could get through there and get all the debris out of there. Okay. Anything else, Art? It's about it right now. Okay. Any questions for Art? No. Okay. Uh, supervisor's report. Um, a couple things uh, as it relates just to the overall operation. I'm happy to report uh, that the township is now um, has moved. Um, from 2400 Arlington Heights Road to 600 Landmire in Elk Grove Village. Uh, the move went uh, pretty smooth last Friday, um, and we're operating today, getting a few other additional things unpacked, uh, but the move went well. Uh, we are open uh, for business. Uh, from a staff perspective, we are close to the public with the ongoing pandemic, um, but we are here to serve the public in a variety of ways. Number one is the drive-through food pantry uh, that we're utilizing right now uh, to limit contact with those that need food uh, and the staff. Um, but we're also continuing to offer emergency assistance, uh, uh, general assistance to those that are in need, um, also referring out to any of our partners so that we can help people as quickly as possible. In addition, our disability, our senior and disab disabled transportation services are still up and running. Uh, we're getting folks to medical appointments, uh, to the grocery store, to pharmacies, all those essential trips that they need. Uh, we are limiting uh, the number of people on the bus, taking proper precautions, sometimes as few as one, uh, one rider at a time to ensure that those folks get to where they need, but we're not putting them in any more danger or at risk. Uh, then we need to. Drivers are taking proper precautions um, to make sure that they stay there, they stay healthy, and they continu can continue to offer those services. Um, our staff and, and administration is there to answer any questions and direct folks as well. Um, so we're still here, even though our building is close to the public, we're still here to serve and happy to be doing that. Um, any questions for me? Is, uh, social services is that all, is that still that's call in as well yes um, but we can approve and we have been approving general assistance and emergency assistance via mail and uh, email um, to get the get um, um, have those needs met um, and and so that we people don't have to go out um, and we limit interaction uh, between staff and clients Any other could questions? We get some, Go ahead. I was just going to ask if we could maybe get some like temporary signage, like you know, banner type sign with um, the township name on it for a while, till we have, till we can get a permanent sign. On on the building. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can. I mean, we can come up with some options as far as what we'd want to do. Um, I don't know. We'd have to see what sign companies are operating. Um, I know several of them uh, were waiting to hear back for designs uh, on monument signs, post and panel signs, building signs, and it's been slow, if, if at all, um, because folks have been either told to stay home, furloughed, um, just as being non-essential. So um, I, can, I can have Paul reach out to some um, folks that we've used before or just other folks in the area and see if we can get some folks. Were you, did you want something out in front? Were you thinking about something out in front of the building? Yeah, I think that's what yeah or like on the front of the building, you know, like people sometimes put a temporary sign up. But you know what, my husband did tell me that most of the printers that his customers work with are not working right now. Yeah. So 
but we might have to wait. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have Paul see if he can reach out and, and see what we can come up with. But, um, yeah, that's the best that we can do. I know, obviously, this is interesting times, but uh, we'll see what we can come up with. Okay. Mike, can I interject here? Would uh, it be appropriate for Mike to have to send out an email and a robocall that we have made the transition, but we are no long, but we're not open to the public, but we can receive their phone calls? Um, yeah, I mean, if you and I want to talk offline and put a message together, we can do that. Uh, we... Yeah, because at that point, if you and I uh, collaborate on that, they'll know whether or not, you know, food pantry, social services, GA, whatever is available. Okay. Yeah, that, we can do that. that. takes care of at least 8,000 people. Sure. And then the, um, the newsletter will go out this week. So as far as the move goes, people will know that we've moved to the new location. Um, so who's her email going to? I'm sorry? Who is the assessor's email going to? They have a database of clients that they've worked with over the years. I don't know. Um, I, 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 I it's couldn't about 8,000 emails and about a little under a thousand, well, a little over a thousand robocalls to seniors without email. I mean, yeah, like I said, the robocalls, I mean, you can buy lists if we wanted to expand it, but um, yeah, we'll, we can talk offline, but yeah, happy to do that. We're, um, our meeting with our PR rep got canceled last week just because she was working with some of her other clients that were working through some additional um, issues, but we're planning to meet with her soon to put out information to the newspapers as well. Um, so we're working on all of those fronts, putting out work, uh, word through our EGTAC partners um, so as they, we trying to expand our reach into the community and let folks know that we're still here and willing and able to serve. Any other questions? Okay. All right, moving. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the elected officials' reports as presented? So moved. Moved by Trustee Ingrafi. Is there a second? Seconded by Trustee Newardowski. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, correspondence. There is none. Old business, the board may act on um, or we can just discuss. Uh, we have the budget. Uh, updates and revisions uh, for uh, fiscal year 2020-2021. Did you have this in addition, in addition to the budget ordinance, Paul? No, just, just, just the ordinance. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I can just highlight, excuse me, um, uh, based on, there's a, there's a couple things Sue Ellen alluded to earlier. Um, in the um, uh, assessor's division, uh, I had sent out an email uh, two, three weeks ago, can't remember exactly, about increasing the staff salary line item specifically for uh, part-time staff, increasing that 5,000 to make that line uh, 148,552. Um, in addition, moving a thousand dollars into the um employ in, into the employer share of fica raising that to eleven thousand nine hundred and eighty two um that thousand dollars is for incidentals related to the five thousand dollar increase in staff salaries if that needs to be moved into other areas to accommodate that um, that can be done by line item transfer but that's where i'm recommending it go for now um, in addition uh, the social services, um, we had um, based on the, um, let me see here, uh, the groups, the new agencies that we discussed, uh, that we met with uh, since the last board meeting, uh, we had, uh, the board had recommended funding those, those organizations for the full amount. The one organization that was unable to meet um, that evening, something had come up, Fellowship Housing Corporation. Um, you know, my recommendation is 
So hopefully is to use that $5,000 as a placeholder now, even though I'm asking for the budget to be approved, and we can meet with Fellowship Housing Corporation, and then the board can decide whether or not to distribute that money. Um, so that's just based on my recommendations uh, or my thoughts. Are there additional uh, recommendations that the board has? I've got a question, Mike. Yeah, Bob. The uh, employer share of FICA for the assessors? Y yes. How much is that? I didn't do the math. I was what what I had talked to Connie about and what I had laid out in the in, in my uh, my memo was that I was just putting I was recommending a thousand in incidental costs attributed to that increase in salary and that in, in it tied to that increase in the salary line item. Um, are you asking what the percentage is, or are you just asking? I'm just asking what the, what the total. Oh, the total. I'm sorry. It's 11. It's line 4405. With that, with that, a thousand. In the total budget or the, or which line item? No, no, no. Just that one line. You mentioned FICA for the assessor's office. Yes. It's How much money is in that line? A le right now it's 10982. Okay. And I'm and you're going to raise it to, to eleven nine. I'm I'm that's that's my recommendation. Yes, to increase it one thousand dollars to eleven nine eighty two. Okay. One, one so question. We should write the, that fel in. the fellowship. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second, George. Bob, say that again. So it should be written in because it's not there. No, it's it's not there because this is what we approved. This is the this is the budget. These are the budget numbers based on what we approved at the tentative budget meeting. So yes, based on our because I don't I didn't write it in because it might not pass tonight with that change. So I'm not going to assume that's why it wasn't added in. That's why I'm highlighting it because if the board doesn't approve it, then we wouldn't add it in. But if the board does approve it, then yes, we would add it in tonight. Do we need to change IMRF at all, or would that? Um, extra work not affect that. It, it's it's going to de it's going to depend on who Connie hires to do the part time work. Um, but that thousand dollars will cover that five thousand dollar increase if she needs. If if Connie at, at the end of the year needs to do some line item transfers to compensate for the the IMRF contribution, she can do that. Okay. Just to just to clarify the uh, the fellowship housing. Uh, the five thousand dollars so that's a placeholder and it will not be allocated or it will not be uh, uh, allocated or improved until after we meet with them that's sim that was simply my recommendation the reason it's showing here now is because the board had put it as a placeholder at the last meeting and i just wanted to highlight it because we did not hear from them that's one of the groups we did not meet with but it the board did approve it as a placeholder at the last meeting okay Uh, any other recommendations, comments about um, the budget for um, town fund, general assistance, and sewer? Is the, um, the $5,000 $5, had... $5, additional for staff salaries added already into the staff salaries for the assessor's office? Not on, not on, not on the budget that you're seeing. It would, okay. it, it would increase it to 148,552. Gotcha. Was there another? I heard another question. Yeah, I just had two questions. One, I think Connie has somebody else on her insurance now. One of her employees, wife or husband, is that right? So uh, does that need uh, anything? New wife. Does that need to be adjusted? So Connie and month? Connie and I spoke about that earlier today. Um, and just based on our conversation, we're going to, I didn't have, um, I, I, I was not aware of that. I did not have that number. I could not prepare that number in time for tonight's meeting. Um, but based on that number, if there's no money left in the budget, we can, we can rebudget um, and add that total and, and add that amount in for the spousal insurance. Okay. 
Yeah, I just. Uh, my other question. Go ahead. My other question was with the grants um, and the um, COVID-19. Uh -huh. Is there any way, uh, if some of our agencies end up getting inundated or needing, um, you know, just providing so many services that they need more um, money, is there any way we can increase somebody partway through the year if they need extra help? Yes, you can re you can rebudget and out reallocate funds at any time, um, at any point in the year. Can we put anything in there that is not a specific grant that is like um, like this line item is for COVID nineteen help for the community if needed? Can can we do that? Yep, you can absolutely do that. You would just have to rebudget, create a line item, add money to that line item, and go through the budget approval process. Can we do that after we approve it, or would we have to do it tonight, or how would that so work? A re or is anyone think that's a good idea? A re a rebudget is exactly how it's. So let's so just take this. Let's let's say two months from now, we're budgeting now. A rebudget is basically going back and saying, okay, look. Either we want to add, take away, made a mistake, needed to change something, and all you're doing is saying at any given time the board has this has this authority. Uh, you can do it as many times as you need to, many times as you want to. Um, and you're saying, okay, we're going to start this budget process over. You present a new tentative budget with line item changes, line item additions. You approve a tentative budget. It lays on the table for 30 days, and then you approve the final budget. Um, so no, you can do, you. the board has the ability to do that at any time, the board, the board members choose. Um, it, so really there's no, the board has a lot of flexibility in when you'd want to do that, whether it be tonight, tomorrow, six months from now, um, the board can do that at any time. And if we decided there was one of our agencies that really um, could use extra help during their, the year. Is that a rebudgeting or is that just a changing that line item? We can do line item transfers, but there's limits on how much we can do. I guess it would depend on the amount. We could pull funds from another line item. It would just depend on the amount. Okay. Does anyone think we should add a line item for possible emergency funds for COVID-19 or should do you think we should approve the budget and have that option later? My thought is that we always have the option so we can execute that option if we need to. Um, right now, I mean, I, I think, it, I mean, it kind of sounds nice in theory, but we're, we're kind of flying blind. We, do, we don't know what our agencies or if there's other agencies, I have no data to make any decisions on anything. No one's asked for more money. Um, not saying that there's not a need out there, but you know, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what to put in that line item. I wouldn't know how to. I haven't given any thought to how we would allocate that. Um, so I would just rather have take a wait and see approach. And and there's nothing wrong. There's 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 really. George and I were having a conversation earlier. There's rebudgeting because for a good reason, and that would be exactly what you're talking about, Sue Allen, is this is a rebudget because of an emergency and, and we wanted to take additional action. That's a good thing. Rebudgeting because we couldn't budget properly in the first place because of, you know, you know, a bunch of mistakes, that's a bad reason. So I think rebudgeting is not in and of itself a bad thing. And the fact that we could do it any time we want, um, I think we just take a wait and see approach. But that's just my two cents. So I'll can open that up to the board to discuss. I think a, I think a wait and see approach is probably the best way of doing it. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with these individual uh, agencies. Uh, they may be coming to us and requesting more money. Uh, but I think we need to pass the budget today, and then we can work on it later. Should the need arise. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. If we really needed to a little more quickly for any reason, could we um, have a extra meeting to do that? Because I know it has to sit on the That's table for 30 meeting. days. Absolutely, yeah. So, so 
For this purpose, I'm happy to call a meeting in my absence or for some reason I'm unavailable or unwilling to. Two trustees can call a meeting of the board. Um, we can get together and, and um, expedite the process, absolutely. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Any other comments about the budget? <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, so we'll we'll discuss that um, at the under new business uh, and ordinance 2020-01. Um, but moving under old business resolution 2019-10, um, just another revision um, uh, to the uh, trip transit agreement with Pace. Um, again, I didn't see it. I I read it. I didn't see anything that was. Um, that stuck out to me, Paul. Was there anything from the last trip meeting that that stood out to you? This is the annual one. And what had happened uh, was the, the original one that came to us had some changes in it, and James Barr from Hanover um, was. Uh, we discussed it. Hold on one second. Can the board hear Paul? No. You go up. No. He needs he's gonna, to he's gonna go to the mic. He's gonna go to the microphone. One second. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear Paul now? Can you hear me? No. No. No? Why don't you sit up here? Yeah. Okay, how about now? Is that much any better? Much better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. The um, trip agreement had some revisions that were made by Pace and the townships, various townships at a meeting, uh, either an MTA meeting or an administrator's meeting, I don't know which one it was, discussed the changes they had made. And so James Barr uh, from Hanover Township took the lead and was working with Pace to um, get the agreement changed. And it went back and forth multiple times. Uh, basically, there were some revisions to the insurance and I believe the indemnification area. And uh, so James pushed back uh, many times and they finally gave in and uh, had some concessions. Um, still wasn't completely what the townships wanted, but they were told this is it, take it or leave it. So that was kind of how it came to play. Um, several of the townships had mentioned they had talked to their attorneys and they said it would be a remote, very, very remote likelihood that the townships would ever have any um, liability in any kind of something that would happen with a uh, rider on the trip program. So with that, the townships were uh, okay to move forward and that's the result is what you're seeing in your packet for this revised resolution. Was there any compromise or was it simply we accepted their changes? No, it was back and forth. James, James got them to concede on several things. They, it looked like they took a conglomeration of multiple different agency agreements that they have with different groups and kind of took pieces of them and stuck them into the trip agreement. And so it, was, it was, stood out like a sore thumb and that's when they were approached and said, this isn't right, this is not what it was before, we want changes made. James did a good job in negotiating for the townships. He took it as far as he could. Okay, so that's the answer. Thank you. Hold on, let's wait right there. Hmm? Uh, any questions for Paul? No. And this doesn't affect this doesn't affect our ability to ride or how we operate or anything like that or doesn't change zones or who can ride no. and and the money available to us that comes no. from the state. So. No. All right. Thank you. All right. That just informative only, what's that it's only informative no I mean we you know we need to approve the revised language um, can I have a motion to approve the revised contract the trip contract so so move. Move. trustee and Grafia first in there I believe is second by Saturn. seconded by trustee Saturn any further discussion roll call please trustee Saturn Aye. Trustee Niradowski. Aye. Trustee Ingrafia. Aye. Trustee Keenly. Aye. Supervisor Sweeney. Aye. 
Okay, motion carries. Under new business, the budget and appropriation ordinance 2020-01, the town fund, social services, and sewer budget. Um, like I said, out, out, outside of the changes that I highlighted or recommended, um, and even those changes had not been made. I was just discussing them. But outside then, are there other items? Uh, and then we can talk about those in greater detail. But are any other items uh, that the board would like to discuss? Okay, no. hearing none, uh, if we can start in the assessor's division, uh, I'll open it up to any discussion about the recommendation I made uh, of a $6,000 increase to the overall budget, uh, $5,000 increase, uh, $5, increase in the staff salaries line item, and a $1,000 increase uh, to the employer share of FICA. With that, I'll open it up to the floor for discussion. Yeah, I think we should add that in there. Okay. Any other thoughts? We can take we, we can take a vote. I mean, with that added in there, and see how the vote goes. If you'd like, if that makes it the easiest thing to do, we can do that. Um, if there's no objection to that. Um, so just 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 for clarification. Yes, sir. The, uh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hang on just one second. Staff salaries 4403 would go to 148552, and uh, 4405 would go to 11982, and that would add another $6,000 dollars to the total. That is correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, and then under the social services, um, the we have uh, the board of the tentative, the arts refreshing the soul, um, and then our subsequent meeting, uh, the board approved uh, the grant uh, for a thousand dollar grant for that agency, uh, fellowship housing. As we discussed, uh, we uh, did not. Um, did not meet with they couldn't attend that evening we haven't been able to meet obviously with uh, the pandemic going on it's made things a little bit more difficult but the tentative meeting the board recommended for 5,000 as a placeholder as I said we could hold that back in, in April or May hear from this organization and decide whether or not to disperse these funds and then hopeful beginnings uh, was a Oh, um, another $5,000 that the um, board had approved at the tentative meeting. Okay. Um, and Glenn, why does Glenn Kirk not have a, a line, item. line item number? I thought they didn't ask, I didn't think they asked for money this year. Yeah, it's on the budget, but there's no, no line item with it. Or the oh, yeah, I'm just asking. I'm, yeah, I'm just asking. I'm, I'm asking. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, did we hear from? Did we hear from? Oh yeah, and then one of the organ. Oh, the one of the organizations that the board did not. Um, can't remember. Paint the. Earth paint. Earth Earth paint. We're going to talk to the. Yeah, I, I haven't yet because of the move. Yeah, I'm still planning to move, but uh, with them. But the board decided that they did not want to provide that grant this year. Um, so with that, I'll leave it open for the board and and uh, to discuss whether or not you want to continue to leave that eleven thousand in there in the budget between Arts Refreshing the Soul Fellowship Housing Corporation and Hopeful Beginnings. Yes, I'd like to leave those in. Okay. Um, any other comments from the board? Okay. Let me see here. Uh, All right. Sorry, I was just doing, making a note here. Okay. Um, so with those recommended changes, just letting everyone know where we're at, uh, total 
uh, total uh, town fund expenditures would be two million nine hundred and fifty six thousand two hundred and twenty eight dollars um, any recommended changes or questions about the general assistance budget been no changes since the tentative budget was approved no okay all right the sewer that uh, just to recap that uh, total um, <coughs> General assistance uh, total estimated expenditures is five hundred ninety-five thousand three hundred dollars. And then any comments, questions, or recommendations uh, for the sewer fund? Okay. Uh, that total um, ex total expenditures for the sewer fund is two hundred fifty thousand two hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and total appropriations for all funds is three million five hundred forty-five thousand. I'm sorry. Um, it, with the increase of that six thousand, it would be three million five hundred fifty-one thousand five hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Okay. All right. So I will make a motion to approve Ordinance 2020-01 uh, with the changes as I laid out in the assessor's office and with um, the addition, not the addition, but leaving in the Fellowship Housing Corporation grant request amount. Is there a second? The new second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Saturn. Okay, discussion. Okay, hearing none, uh, was there a comment? Bob, was that you? Nope. Okay, Dale, was that you? No. Okay, roll call, please. Trustee Saturn. Aye. Trustee Nierodowski. Aye. Trustee Ingrafia. Aye. Trustee Keenly. Aye. Supervisor Sweeney. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the um, ordinance 2020-01 uh, has been approved and we'll be able to start the budget right on uh, schedule with our fiscal year. Okay, the last item on the agenda. Go ahead. Oh, Paul has a question. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Yep. Assuming it for the entire ordinance. Yes. Yes, for the entire ordinance, yep. Okay. Um, okay, the last item on the agenda, um, uh, a while back and it was approved and um, the refrigerator and freezer, freezer that is in the food pantry, um, some additional work I wanted to bring to the board's attention and see if this, is, uh, this work, uh, the board would like to move forward on this work and as it relates to backup power for the refrigerator and, and freezer, um, right now it is not on, um, uh, not, is not being backed up, um, but we, for final, uh, or for at least uh, temporary occupancy, um, there, um, there were a few things, and, and Pete could talk to this, uh, Pete Sylvester is here, the superintendent uh, on, on, this, on this job for the renovation of the overall renovation. Uh, there was some emergency lighting um, that needed to be tied or was tied back in, and he could clarify that, to an existing generator that was at the front of the building. It wasn't operating, um, but because we needed to get it operating or, um, or tie in some existing emergency lights into another backup system, this was the, that was the easiest way to go, and so, um, he had somebody come out and get that generator up and running, fired right up. There's some maintenance things we have to do to it. Um, but then we got talking about um, as far as backup power goes, and we had previous conversations, but um, now that we're wrapping up the project, Pete talked about uh, backup power for the cooler and freezer, and now that the generator was up and running, um, it was something that we could um, use that generator to do. So I, wanted, I asked him to come out 
uh, to discuss ways that we could go about doing that. He laid out to me a good, better, and best uh, option. And he's, because I couldn't do it and I, I, I couldn't explain it, I couldn't give it, just, uh, give it justice, I asked him to come out and kind of explain and see if the board had questions and wanted to take any action. So with that, uh, Pete Sylvester, if you would come up to, uh, you can try, yeah, I mean, I, if that one works at the end, that, that would be great. <laughs> I know, I know. So here we go, Pete, the floor is yours. Please describe the best, better, what is it, good, better, and best options for us. Good, better, best, and recommended. Okay, thank you. So uh, yeah, I am Pete Sylvester. I was site superintendent for this project. Um, I have the proposals for a change order to tie in your existing backup generator into, or the cooler freezer into the existing backup generator. So the short version is you have a generator. Can you hold on one second? Can everybody hear Pete? Yes. Yes. Okay. You have a backup generator. It is functional. Your emergency light system is tied into that generator. So if power should fail, the natural gas generator turns on and it powers the emergency lights. And that's it. It was also powering the gas pumps, the gas pump alarms, and the gas pump safety system, which is no longer operational because the gas pumps are not being used and the tanks are empty. That leaves an abundance of power behind that can be used to tie in the gas generator emergency system into, or the cooler, into the gas generator system. Um, there is uh, an outstanding um, recommended repairs that I have for the generator that I'll give to you, Mike, this evening. Um, but there are three ways of tying the gas generator or the cooler into the gas generator. I keep getting that backwards. Um, there is the good system in the far north side of the uh, warehouse space. There is a fusible panel. It's a very old system, but it's also very um, robust. That fusible panel has a certain amount of amperage to it that is in use, which is actually very minimal. Um, we can take a set of wires and go from that fusible panel back to the cooler, tie into the electrical panel that is dedicated to the cooler freezer, and thereby power the cooler itself. That has flaws to it. Um, there is the potential that the cooler will draw more power than that, that panel can currently support. We don't know the actual state of that fusible panel, um, but the cabling and the labor to get it done is $10,800 uh, plus GC fees to a, which we didn't calculate out because it's not the recommended one. That is the good option. It gives you a backup to the cooler. So should power go out to the neighborhood for any length of time, overnight when nobody's here, the frozen goods and the cooled goods will still function or will not go bad. Um, the better option, which also falls into our recommended category, is to eliminate the fusible panel in the far side of the warehouse. Again, that panel has a lot of stuff on it that's not going to be used. And in your next phase of the building project, adopting the uh, bicycle safety course and uh, other items to the backyard and removing the fuel pumps and fuel tanks, you can, at this time, take the oversized electrical panel that is running the cooler and take all of the EM from that fusible link, put it into the cooler panel and, be, and rename the cooler panel EM2, which means it is the emergency panel. So all the existing wire that is currently in the fusible panel that is still operational for the emergency lights, the exit lights, the garage doors, and a couple of other items, all that gets rewired from that panel to the circuit breaker box that is currently running the cooler. And again, that gets relabeled EM2. That is our recommended approach. And just to clarify, that means it'll be dedicated to the freezer cooler by itself. It'll be dedicated to the freezer cooler by itself, and then everything that goes downstream from that power is going to run 
the other emergency lights, but the cooler gets first dibs on power. So you were saying eliminate the fuse wool panel and rewire it into an EMT cooler panel, which is a dedicated panel? Yes, a dedicated panel. Currently you have a dedicated panel for the cooler. The, uh, the original panel schedule or the amount of circuit breakers installed for this project was exceeded when we added the cooler in uh, and the cooler controls and a few other lighting circuits that the village required when they did the, the wiring for the building. So we had you're rewiring the generator directly into the uh, into yes. the, uh, the the cooler panel. Correct. So EM panel number two is a fusible panel way out in the north side of the of the of the, the garage area. That has dedicated power from the generator. We're going to eliminate that panel, take the necessary circuits from that panel, and rewire the direct wire from the cooler or from, the, from EM2 into the cooler sub-panel, have that become EM panel number two or emergency panel number two. First dibs from power goes to the cooler, then goes to the emergency lights, then to the exit lights, and then everything else. It also, it also gives you a jump off point for future work in the, in the back lot area. That's the thought behind it. That's why it's the, the recommended way to go. That's the better, you get good is going from the panel back to the cooler. Better is eliminating the panel and putting all the new circuits in the sub-panel. Then there's the best, which is not the one that we're going to recommend, um, and that is taking the, a dedicated circuit from the basement through the building to the panel itself and uh, adding some conduit and piping to make it work. There is uh, an open breaker in the basement for the generator. You have four switches down there that are, available, that are available for this switch gear. Three of them are in use. The fourth is a spare. You can draw power directly from that. That's the most expensive um, failure-free option, but it doesn't get you advanced in what other things you're going to be doing in this, for this building, which is why it's not the recommended. It is the best. It's dedicated. It will never fail, but it's not the recommended way to go. What are the costs for better and best, please? The better is the better and recommended is fourteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. The best is twenty thousand dollars. Oh. Again, <laughs> we are not recommending best. What's the recommended? For the recommended is fourteen thousand two hundred and twenty five two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and twenty five dollars. Did you say there was one that was ten thousand eight hundred? Yes, that was the good. That was the, that was the good option. That was, good. that was the good. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Again, there's there's reasons for rec for the recommended as the middle grade item. Um, it simply provides you with the best long term usage, as opposed to doing more extensive work in the building while you're under operations. So, so just kind of if I understand this correctly, and you and I have, have spoken, so. Number one, it, you won't have to interrupt operations because obviously you have to feed things up through the building. Mm -hmm. um, so that can interrupt operations. But in your estimate, it's more work, more funds, and it's Less not work. necessary. Correct. It's not necessary. It's, it's, it is more work than what is necessary to achieve the goals of keeping the freezer cooler backed up. And the... From my understanding from our conversations, good to better, having a dedicated panel feeds the power to the cooler and freezer first, as opposed to not only one, maybe um, drawing on the good version, maybe drawing the cooler and freezer can't get enough power because it's sharing power. Yeah, so the, the fusible panel is already dedicated and wired, and we don't know exactly how it's wired, and given the history of the building that we've come across, some of that wiring may be going places we don't want it to and drawing an excess of power. So under high demand, it may fail, and there's no way to predict that. So by eliminating EM panel number two, the fusible panel, and relabeling the new panel, we can guarantee that the cooler and freezer retain power and the other emergency lighting circuits are solid and working correctly. Okay. 
Anything you'd like to add before I open it up for questions? Uh, with the board's approval, we can start tomorrow. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll open it up to the board to ask any questions of Pete or discuss um, if and how you'd like to move forward. So the floor is uh, anybody who wants it. The only, the only thing I will say is um, um, if you've seen the cooler and freezer lately, uh, there's a great deal of food in there. Uh, we're maximizing the space already. Um, and um, we are meeting a need. Folks are coming in every day for the drive-through. We continue, we expect that need to continue. Um, spent a good amount of money. The township has spent a significant amount of money, which um, as we previously discussed, we're working to get the cooler and freezer uh, at least some of it covered by donations, but um, in the meantime, uh, we don't want that investment to um, fail, especially we don't want that food that people count on uh, to spoil. Um, so, uh, you know, I think I, I'm not the most savvy when it comes to these things, but I've, over the last year, I've, I've come to rely on Pete quite a bit and his recommendations. Um, they always cost money, um, but they're always good recommendations. So, um, you know, I think it would be a good thing for us to move <coughs> forward um, and make sure that's backed up. But and and I would go with the recommendation uh, of Pete. But that's my two cents. So, thoughts from the board? Do you want a motion? I, I mean, if there's no. I mean, I'm, yeah, that would be great if you'd, if you'd like to propose a motion. Mike, could I make a comment? It's Connie. Go ahead, Connie. Go ahead, I Connie. Realize that, um, I realize that uh, resources are always scarce, but I also realize that it is uh, a good thing to think about short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals. I absolutely understand the need for backup power for the refrigerator freezer. What I would simply put before you now is a medium to long-term goal that we have a gas power generator that would supply power to the entire facility so that all offices could function during an emergency. There, um, I personally Connie, there is not enough power generator in that generator that, to operate you this know, building. You powers my whole house that is used um, more frequently than I would uh, like because of power outages for various reasons. But I would suggest to the board that not only would they cover the refrigerator freezer in the short term, but would think to the medium and long term of uh, uh, assuring power to the entire facility in case of the grid going down, tornadoes, whatever. But that's my personal thought. So, I, I mean, maybe Pete can answer this. I don't know what kind of a generator we would need to pull that off. Um, I don't know if Pete can speak to that. Go ahead, Pete. Uh, Connie, to, to, to your point, the generator you have does not have the power to operate this building in its entirety. You have a 35 kilowatt generator. Um, the building requires, in the new construction area alone, uh, 280 amps, so roughly 15 kilowatts. The old building uh, emergency system alone is 30 is 28 kilowatts so the the numbers simply don't add up you the, the generator you have doesn't have the power to operate the building if you wanted to do that and I'm not talking about the generator that we have I'm talking about um, I'm talking about somewhere in the future so that once power goes down We've got internet, we've got electricity, we've got phone so that we can serve the public. Okay. Um, I realize that right now that's not in the budget and it's not something that can be done. I only put it uh, forth that you might think about the possibility that this is something that might be in our future. 
Okay. No, that's, I mean, we can definitely talk about that moving forward. I, I, I was confused as well. I thought you were talking about adding, connecting everything to this generation. Not right now. No, okay. absolutely not. But as, as, I, as I mentioned, I've got a gas powered generator. I installed it only because I had my mother with me who might have needed oxygen or whatever. So if power went out, that could have been a problem. However, now I think about it in terms of my office and all the facilities in the township saying, if power goes down, we are still able to function. That's a long-term goal, and it's something I'd like you to think about. Sure. No, we can definitely have that conversation. Happy to. Yeah, um, um, absolutely. What um, can the generator support at this point? So it's a 35 kilowatt generator. So it is which parts of the building? It's a certain. It is of. currently tied into all of the existing building and none of the new building. So essentially, and with with what it's doing now, if we added the cooler and freezer, that would be tops. Correct. Okay. But yeah, we can we can definitely do some research um, in in the future. That's that, we can always do that. Um, existing building is going to be cool. I know that when the power goes out, I am fully functioning in my house with internet, electricity, everything. I am. Sure. I know that these are uh, incidents that hopefully would be rare, but. I also think that is a good story. That's something we think about. Yep. Um, yeah, we can discuss that in the future. I, I mean, that's I'm always happy to have those kind of discussions. Um, but for the topic at hand, uh, Trustee and Grafia, did you want to make a motion? Make a motion for the uh, better option. The um, fourteen thousand two fifty middle grade option. That's it. What was that, Trustee Saturn? The one that's 14250 Does that have, does yeah, that have contractor it's, fees in there? It does. Uh, the, yeah. No, the contractor, free, contractor fees bring it to 15677 in total. 15677 all in. So I don't know if you want to amend your... I mean, well, you didn't give a dollar amount. Didn't um, give a dollar amount. So the uh, make a motion for fifteen thousand six hundred and seventy-seven total for the uh, generator. Okay, um, for the back generator. backup power for the food pantry, okay, uh, refrigerator and freezer. Okay, there's a motion on the floor made by Trustee and Grafia. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Trustee Keenly. Uh, additional discussion. Roll call, please. Trustee Saturn. Aye. Trustee Niradowski. Aye. Trustee Ingrafia. Aye. Trustee Keenly. Aye. Supervisor Sweeney. Aye. Motion carries. Um, and Pete, you said you they can get to work tomorrow. Get to work tomorrow. Fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry. Wednesday. Tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. Tomorrow's All right. Tuesday. They can get to get to work on Wednesday. Wednesday. Wonderful. Okay. Um, all right. With no other matters come before the board, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Trustee Saturn. Is there a second? Second. Second it, Dale. Seconded by Trustee Newardowski. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Pete, can I do Sure.